the Acer hardware with the embedded Devon IT software. Uh, first up, we have the Veriton N2110. Uh, this is the, uh, the high-end device. It's going to be running either our Devon IT uh, DTOS software, which stands for Devon Terminal Operating System, or the Windows Embedded Standard 7. Um, it has a dual-core 1.65 GHz processor and dual display port, as well as some USB 3.0 ports. Uh, this will be for your, your high-end users, um, people who need a lot of graphical display, a lot of things going on. Uh, next is the Veriton N2620G. This will also run the DTOS 7.1 or West 7. Um, it's an Intel Celeron 887 processor, and it has HD uh, graphics, as well as uh, a DVI and HDMI video output. So these are uh, both dual monitor devices. Um, the 2620 can, of course, be attached to the back of a monitor. And the same is true for the Veriton N2010G. Uh, this guy will only run DTOS 7.1. It is a, uh, an ARM-based uh, TI-DM8148 processor. Uh, that's the system on a chip. It has dual DVI port, and it's ultra-small, and, of course, mountable to the back of a monitor. All three of the, these devices have a wireless option, uh, but come standard with the Ethernet connectivity. We have two families of software, as I referenced, uh, the DTOS 7.1, as well as the Windows Embedded Standard 7. Uh, DTOS is based off of uh, Open Embedded Linux. Um, it'll come prepackaged with your VMware View clients, your uh, Citrix receiver, uh, your R desktop client. Uh, so for all the connectivity you may need, it's built in. Uh, the same is true for Windows Embedded. Um, all of our softwares are uh, certified and are certified with the newest versions of the release clients. Um, so as new clients come out, uh, VMware View 5, 5.1, and so forth, they're reviewed and uh, certified against those. And both of our operating systems are managed by our management software called Echo, which I'll get into in just a few slides. DTOS, as I said, is Devon IT's operating system, standing for Devon Terminal Operating System. It's based off of Open Embedded. Um, it's a very simplified operating system. As you can see, we offer a control panel, which is on the screenshot on the left. Uh, and from there, you set up your connections to your Firefox session, your uh, VMware View, your R desktop, whatever you're going to be using. You create that connection in there, and every connection has the option to be auto-started and auto-restarted. That way, you can kind of loop a user into a constant connection to a, a VMware View server or an RDP server. Uh, wherever you want them to go, you can kind of loop them in there. So it's the, the more hands-off or uh, solution that we offer. On the other hand, we have our Windows Embedded Standard 7, uh, which, once again, we come preloaded with all the connection clients you may need. Uh, but Windows Embedded Standard 7 allows you a little more uh, user input and manipulation. Uh, so we'll put the connections on the desktop, but allow the user to connect in from there. Uh, so if you want something that the user can mess around with, uh, if you maybe need to add in your own little bit of software to run with it, uh, Windows Embedded Standard 7 would be the option to go with. Um, if you want a streamlined, no user interaction, uh, you want to lean more towards the DTOS. Um, so as I keep saying, uh, we partner with Citrix and we build that into all of our uh, software. Uh, Citrix offers two different types of connection types. Uh, the ICA, which stands for Independent Computer Architecture, or the High Definition User Experience, or HDX. Um, these are offered through Zen Desktop and Zen App. Uh, this is for deploying uh, just a simple application to a desktop or a full-blown virtual desktop to a desktop. Um, some examples of Citrix. Uh, include the, uh, the University of Texas, uh, the medical branch, um, and independent bank. Uh, both of these have deployments of Citrix, um, and more examples can be found at the link at the bottom of the page. Can you go back one slide and redo that one? Because she was talking the whole time. The Certainly. Page. Okay. Uh, some examples of Citrix deployments include University of Texas, medical branch, uh, and the independent bank, uh, Michigan Bank. These deployments both use uh, Citrix, either through Zen Desktop or Zen App. Um, and more examples can be found at the link at the bottom of the page. Next, we have Microsoft. Microsoft offers the RDP, or Remote Desktop Protocol, as well as RemoteFX, which is their high-definition graphical experience. Um, and RDS is Remote Desktop Services. Um, so you'll usually hear something along the lines of uh, Windows Server, Windows Server 2008 R2, um, those are the kind of the back ends that are used for a Microsoft deployment. Uh, you can also use a standard RDP connection to go from one PC to another. Uh, some examples of RDP include Bank of Hawaii and Target. 
Uh, both of these are using RDP in their deployments, and more examples can be found at the bottom of the page. Lastly, we have VMware. Uh, VMware uses the RDP protocol, similar to Microsoft, as well as their PC over IP, uh, or shortened down to PCOIP. Um, PCOIP originally came as a hardware deployment, uh, where there was a hardware connection between uh, software chips, and now it's moved to more of a software deployment, uh, so that any device can actually run a PC over IP software connection. Some examples of VMware View users are uh, Amway and the city of Pittsburgh, and you can see more examples at the link at the bottom of the page. As I said before, we have our uh, Echo management software. Echo comes bundled with any of our uh, thin client offerings. And uh, Echo comes as a virtual appliance. Uh, so you would install this on your backend server, be that your VMware, your Microsoft, your Citrix. Uh, it would load up and kind of run in parallel. Um, it's a small virtual appliance. There's not much to do on the appliance itself. Uh, but what you can really do is log in through a web console. And you can see pages such as the terminal page that we have pictured here where you can go in and manipulate things, uh, edit the settings on terminals, add new connections, adjust the profiles, and so forth, and kind of do a, uh, a full management from anywhere within your network and from any device. Uh, some of the advantages of Echo include that it's a web-based application, uh, so you can roam anywhere within your network, connect in, and manage your devices. Uh, the user-friendliness advantage of Echo compared to the HP Device Manager and Wise Device Manager uh, it's a more intuitive layout and the context menus uh, with greater variety and utility. Uh, so it's kind of a lot easier to explore, easier to find your way around, and easier to get things done. Uh, Echo provides a more organized method for creation and distribution of settings, profiles, and complete images. Um, so you can do all those things, uh, clone off settings, clone off profiles, clone off connections, and a full disk image. So any of those things can be pushed out from one device to another. Echo has a more fluid search function. It's actually a live search, and you can search by any of the fields available in the uh, on the page. So be that the terminal name, anything, all the way down to the unique identifier of the device. So if you know that, you can type that in and search for exactly that. Uh, Echo is able to both push and pull settings to and from terminals without having to remotely configure via the management console. So as I said, you can rip the settings from one device, push them down to the other, and just a series of five clicks. Echo is a bundled cost. Both the HP Device Manager and Wise Device Manager require a software purchase to access all of the functions of their software. Uh, Echo offers an increased scalability, as well as it has been deployed on an enormous scale through a large financial institution with an estimated 36,000 terminals worldwide and an estimated global rollout of an additional 150,000 terminals. Echo offers uh, software packages uh, these are updates and software that can be stored on the Echo server and pushed down to the devices. Uh, examples include custom wallpaper images, updating software clients, and potentially bug fixes. Echo is offered in a number of different languages, including German, Spanish, French, Japanese, Korean, Brazilian Portuguese, simplified Chinese, and traditional Chinese. Uh, please note this only applies to the user interface. Whether or not a program like VMware View or Citrix translates is dependent on them.